So when calculating focal length from resolution, we didn't really see any visible artifacts. So I guess it'd be easy to conclude that because there are no visible artifacts, that this method doesn't contain any rounding errors, and therefore is a more accurate method and should be favoured. This isn't actually strictly true, because unknown to most users, Photoshop is actually calculating something called aspect ratio behind the scenes, and this results in some rounding. And I want to just to quickly show this. So you can see that I've got Photoshop open here and if I just go into the image size just to show you this you can see that this is our 1280 by 720 version that we've been using in previous uh, demonstrations. And this is obviously the still frame from frame, frame 50 that was exported from Nuke um, and we did this in order to increase the canvas size. Now Photoshop allows us to scale files up and down using an attribute known as image aspect ratio. This is a very simple calculation of the width in relation to the height. So an image size with a, uh, with a value of 1500 pixels wide by, by, uh, by 1000 pixels high would have an aspect ratio of 1.5 given that the width is one and a half times the height. If the image was exactly the same height as the width then this would be a value of 1.0 because obviously the width and the height are the same so it's not, it doesn't have any additional values to, to add on. In this particular case with a 1280 by 720 then what this, what this means is that there's an extra 0.7778 of a value which we get when we multiply the 1280 by the 720 and this has to be added to the 1.0 aspect ratio and this results in a complete aspect ratio of 1.7778 so the width is 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 1.7778 of the height from this point Photoshop uses this ratio when we scale or otherwise resize the image it basically gives us the tools to constrain the width and the height so whichever attribute we change the other will stay will scale proportionally and consequently the, the aspect ratio always stays the same so in this particular example, I'll just turn off these little text box that I put in just to illustrate how uh, image aspect ratios worked out. So let's say that we, uh, we want to change the image size here. So I'm just going to come to File, Image Size. That brings up this little dialog box. And let's say that I want to change the, uh, the, the height to, let's just say, 721. Okay, we can see this little uh, lock here, and this is constraining the width to the height. So essentially, whichever value I change here, the other one will change proportionally. Okay, so let's say I just want to change that by one pixel. And you can see what's happened. It's made the proportionate calculation to the width, so the width has changed from 1280 to 1282, which seems fair enough. Okay, but let's just see what happens now if we change the width by one pixel. Okay. we can see that our height has now moved up by 721. So what that's telling us essentially is that we're getting two completely different results depending on which value we adjust. Now that can't be right. And this is caused by Photoshop rounding up the width and the height to create the whole integer value that it knows it needs. Because this is calculated by pixels, we know that there can't be such a thing as a 0.3 of a pixel or a 0.6 of a pixel. It has to round them up to all the whole integers. And what it's doing is it's doing that very thing. It's actually rounding up these percentage values to whole, uh, to whole values. Okay, I'm just going to set that back to 720 and close that dialog and I'm just going to bring up the calculator to illustrate this point okay so if we put a value of 721 and we multiply that by our image aspect ratio which is 1.77778 you can see that what we actually get is a value of, of 1281.777 so we can see that what that actual value is, is a percentage value. And we can see that this is why Photoshop is actually rounding it up to 1282, because it's, it's recognizing this value is, is above 0.5, and therefore it's increasing the value to, to 1282, rather than rounding it down to 1281. So I'll close that down. Okay, so you can see that even though 
we couldn't really see any visible errors in our example. Rounding errors were nevertheless present and obviously in other projects they would be more visible. So we can see that Photoshop is actually rounding up values in the background. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up there. I hope this op has opened up a little window into Photoshop, how it tries to help us but in doing so introduces these little mathematical errors that can easily disrupt a matte painter, particularly when they're using overscanning techniques.